I've done a couple of programs about the Zwicko 14 to 150 lens, a wonderful optic for the travel photographer. In one of those programs, I got my knuckles wrapped because I referred to it as the fantastic plastic. Well, I was wrong about that. Uh, the, I should say actually plastic fantastic, or which way round is it? I'm not quite sure. But anyway, whatever the answer, it was the wrong lens. The right lens is this one, which I happen to have, the 40 to 150 medium telephoto through to a more powerful telephoto. It's a variable aperture lens, uh, f4 through to 5.6. And looking through my photographs, I found a number of images using this lens. So perhaps, and in recompense, it's about time I showed you a program using this lens. So let's have a look, shall we? Because of its range, mid to powerful telephoto, it has never been my favourite lens for landscapes or architecture. But for the big view, it does pick out important detail. However, and for whatever the purpose, it must be remembered that depth of field is reduced at any aperture and the risk of camera shake increased when hand-holding. It does not have its own image stabiliser, and if you don't want to rely on the camera stabiliser, a tripod or monopod may be necessary. The 40 to 150 is more useful for wildlife photography or when the subject cannot be accessed. However, notice that because of the lack of depth of field, the background is out of focus. Here it helps the composition by making the swan stand out from the background. If it was possible to get closer to the swan with a standard lens, then depth of field will increase and the background will be sharper. At the same focal length, the background is almost sharp. That is because I am further away from the subject and the camera is using a smaller aperture. Also, to freeze the athlete, and he does look the part, but I would be ignorant about his technique. I used one five hundredth of a second on shutter priority to freeze him. His face in profile and looking back helps to create the impression of speed. These are simple examples where a traditional knowledge of photography, even with a digital camera, achieves the desired shot. Much the same applies here. Because of more light and the use of a larger aperture, I could shoot at one thousandth of a second and keep the ISO at two hundred for quality. It is a shot that the eye does not see because the water patterns have to be frozen. A common misunderstanding about micro four thirds involves depth of field. Because the sensor is smaller, it is assumed that a shallow depth of field is not possible. But to throw the background out of focus, as here and in a previous shot, is easily done with the right lens and aperture. A telephoto optic and a large aperture reduces depth of field. Wide angle and a small aperture does the opposite. And you will find this in most formats from micro four thirds to full frame and beyond. One of the singular qualities of a telephoto lens, zoom or prime, is to flatten perspectives in a long view. A digital zoom does not do this. A few years ago, I attended the steam fair at the Weald and Downland 
open-air museum on the South Downs. The way these ranks of traction steam engines were arranged provided the perfect composition. At full telephoto, or somewhere close to it, it was possible to get interesting candid shots of people working the engines, which also limited depth of field, throwing the background conveniently out of focus. But when photographing detail, shift the focal length of the lens the other way to increase depth of field, but a critical look soon reveals that it was not quite enough to maintain sharpness overall, particularly on the left, so a black mark there. This is more important for wildlife shots, where the whole creature needs to be sharp, but creative effects are for the taking when only the face is sharp, but I am not very good at that. So I will move on to landscapes. W.A. Poucher the celebrated landscape photographer of the 60s and 70s, was very much of the traditional mould, preferring a modest telephoto for mountains to preserve their statue. I wonder what he would think today, whether the preference, even fad, is for extreme wide-angle creating huge foregrounds, the mountains if they can be seen somewhere in the far distance. A sudden splash of sunlight and a quick reaction from the photographer produced this shot, which is why the camera is on program, a setting much misunderstood. Again, telephoto has contracted perspectives, increasing the power and magnificence of those distant mountains. You may have noticed that all shots are taken with early models of the pen range, cameras ideal for the traveller who does not want too much weight and size. As for quality, I leave it up to you, but none of the images have been cropped. They are saved to 4 times 3 raw and adjusted in Adobe Lightroom, and you are looking now at JPEG copies. OK, the classic sunset to end this little selection, and including the sun is a severe test for any camera and a photographer. A zoom is not the best optic, a prime best, but taking the aperture down to f13 is highly necessary, but no further, as diffraction may be the penalty. I see photographers using tripods for this type of shot. Heaven knows why. Maybe I have missed something. Unless you suffer from mobility issues, then the shutter speed will be incredibly short. And because the camera is stationary, mounted on a tripod, this will increase the risk of damage to the camera's optical system. So handhold, for goodness sake, with this shot to keep the camera, and perhaps you, safe.